Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Maoz Vavadia. I'm a platform engineer at AppsFlyer, part of the real-time infrastructure team and the cloud native chapter. I've been at AppsFlyer for two and a half years, and before that, I served three years in the military in a technology unit. Ever since I can remember, I've been working with computers, whether developing bots, hacking computers, or reading tech articles. So today we'll talk about one of the main problems we face with Terraform when we're trying to adopt our API. I will briefly explain how we approach developing a solution and why we like to use Terraform. We knew we needed to keep the Terraform capabilities while enriching them to suit our particular needs at AppSpire. Then I will show how the solution works for us and what is the result. So AppSpire is a mobile attribution and marketing analytics platform. The AppSpire engineering team has grown exponentially and there's more than 400 engineers. We operate in squad, meaning each team has full autonomy, and we have 1,000 of microservices that handle more than 2.5 million events per second. The AppSpire architecture operates thousands of resources, from EC2 instances to EKS cluster. In addition, we use a lot of uh, SaaS integration, uh, such as uh, PagerDuty and Datadog, and I'm telling you all these numbers to give you a feeling how hard it is to handle a system like AppSlayer. Our platform is our product, where we develop the infrastructure side, so we consider the developers as our clients. The platform group is a 50 people out of 400 engineers in the R&D department. Our motto is to allow our engineers to do non-trivial things in a trivial way. And in a real-time infrastructure team, we provide a real-time platform for building data-intensive application based on streaming and caching. Our apps include Kafka, Aerospike, Redis, and Memcached. Uh, these slides show the scale of our Kafka environments. You can see more than 60 clusters, 1,000 instances and pods, and 800 billion messages per day. As part of my team's mission, one of our duty is implementing Kafka on Kubernetes. You might ask, why do we need Kafka on Kubernetes? I'm telling you why. Because it is straightforward to maintain and manage large-scale environments on Kubernetes, and we can also develop a custom solution, uh, for example, like Autoscaler, uh, to help us become more efficient. We chose an uh, open source StreamVisit project from the community based on uh, our GitHub solution, and we used Trinzi after a lot of research to adapt it to our needs. And this is the tools that we used in the AppSlayer GitHub solution. Git for tracking changes and the source control. Flux for building the continuous delivery of the application with Terraform controller to reconcile the Terraform resources in the GitOps way. Kubernetes for scaling and the management layer of the containerized application. OPA, the policy engine and Firefly to give us the full visibility, the state of cloud resources, and of course, Terraform. We chose Terraform as our provision tool and the API communication tool between uh, us and between the developers, so that we can publish new infrastructure products. At the same time, we can give all the, provide the guidelines and the best practices we, we want. Uh, we chose Terraform, we adopt Terraform as our primary language because it's intuitive, declarative and community driven. So we started to work and we didn't want to copy paste between modules and declare the same variable multiple times. In that case, we tried to use a lot of nesting between uh, uh, modules, which we knew was a bad practice when using Terraform, which caused to unsolvable dependency. And as a result, we went back to the documentation to understand what we are doing wrong. So we can see the Terraform documentation that say that, Terraform support, mo support module composition by default, but we're commended to keeping the module tree flat with only one, one level of child modules. So we needed to change our approach to a flat, uh, to a flat hierarchy. And this stage, we have a one level of child modules in the hierarchy, as you can see, the root level in the child modules. And we flattened our tree, and now we understand to, if it's OK. As here you can see the way Terraform is commonly applied, only the developer who wrote the module and deeply understood it can use it again and make changes. As you can see the highlighted rows, 
uh, on the slide, such as security group and availability zone and VPC ID, the developers without of deep understanding of the infrastructure side are incapable of using a uh, module such as this one, and they don't want to do it. This means the developer needs to constantly consult with the platform team, which makes us a bottleneck in the workflow. Plus, the platform team cannot protect the developers from possible security vulnerability and keep up the best practices. At this point, for the platform group, our productivity was low for the following reasons. One, it was difficult for us to provide all the guidelines and enforce them. Also, our developers needed to ask us a lot of questions, and we became a bottleneck in the flow. And three, the user experience was extremely poor from the client perspective. For example, if a database is required from the developer, the infrastructure must be configured with all the mandatory fields, and they depend on the help from the platform team. The only advantage here is we didn't have to write a new Terraform module. So our idea was to add a one level in the hierarchy of wrapping the community modules. The green label uh, showed that level was added, and thanks to that, our clients got more simplicity. And why do we add a layer? So we added a layer to fill in the mandatory fields in the flow. This slide shows the scale of, uh, uh, this slide show uh, that we needed to maintain two layers the platform layer and the customer interface layer. To achieve like a simple interface like you can see, only uh, the developer need to declare the module, the source, of it, and the cluster size. This is what really customers see. And remember that in Terraform, with a multi-level tree, you need to propagate all the declaration to the root level. At this stage, the user experience was greatly improved, but the platform productivity got worse because there are many HCA lines we needed to maintain in two levels, the platform level and the client interface level, with a multiple declaration, and it became for us a time-consuming mission, prone to human error and never-ending task. Now, let's get back to our story. What is our mission? We wanted to keep it accessible and decrease the management overhead of Terraform. Our goal is developing a client Terraform module was to hide the system complexity and provide a simple interface based on the facade pattern and the key principle. In addition, we aim to improve the validation process. The developer cannot input incorrect data for the Terraform module. And keep the simplification. Think about how it's easy for developers to write a simple call to one module with only two lines to get a complete product from the platform. They don't have to be a DevOps master to use it. And last thing is the flexibility. The developer gets a complete freedom to control their clusters, and they don't even need us to change anything. So like good engineers, we Googled for a solution. How to give a simple interface in Terraform? Spoiler, no result was found. And so we decided to take the challenge and write in Golang our own solution tool that we call TerraCrust. How does the magic work? Firstly, I need to mention that our client has no exposure to TerraCrust. They don't even know that it exists. TerraCrust automatically generates the interface client module. How it's done? First, we define all the community modules that we needed. Then, we input the mandatory variables and we create a dependency between them if needed. TerraCrust hides all the mandatory fields and reveals only the optional variable. TerraCrust automatically generates three files of Terraform, main, local, and variable files. The developer calls for them by Git like every simple module. If we look again to our tree, uh, we can see the client module la layer is auto-generated by TerraCrust, and now we needed to maintain only one layer, the platform module layer. Uh, so our tree now looks much greener and happier, and thanks to TerraCrust. And how the developers will use the client module? All, all our modules have a readme file in Git. In this example, you can see two lines of code that will install a complete package we provided with all components, Kafka, Zookeeper, Cruise Control, Network Config, Security Config, and the monitoring stack. But what happens if something goes wrong, or maybe the developers want to change a feature? The developers enter the documentation of the module, 
uh, thanks to Teradox. And for example, our clients want to change the logs of course control. As you can see, they can change the options that are exposed to them, the default value, and even they want more in-depth explanation, they can just click in the README button here, and it will redirect them to the inner README module. Here is the inner README module, and now they can choose the debug mode, and as a result, they can uh, declare the cruise control object uh, and change the log as needed. And thanks to the hierarchy, the change of the cruise control logs will propagate directly to the cruise control mo module level. I would like to give you a, a more understanding uh, of this module. It, uh, on the slide, it's include like 70 modules and has the more than 170 variables in total. Pl please look how easy it is. Uh, uh, to use, and everything can be configurable. So thanks to Terracraft, exposing only the optional variable, we can quickly catch if the variable should be shown or not. And of course, because there are fewer HCA lines to maintain, the velocity of the project was increased, and it's become easier to maintain. Terracraft enable us to develop new feature and new modules more, much more quickly, since we don't have to reinvent the interface every time. Bottom line, using Terracraft, we spend less time on manual work and more time on optimizing the development process. So I just want to say thank you very much for attending this talk. It will be great if you go to GitHub by scan the QR code and contribute to Terracraft project. And of course, don't forget to give a star for Terracraft. And again, thank you very much.